Today's story is Salty Sails North, a book by Gloria Rand and illustrated by Ted Rand. Salty Sails North. Look sharp, Zack shouted to Salty one summer day. We're on our way to Alaska. Salty scampered up to the bow, boat's bow, his favorite place to ride. He had been a puppy when Zack had built this boat. Now he was a grown-up deep-sea sailor, a real Salty dog. A huge container ship passed by, and Salty barked a sharp warning. Good, good crew, Zack called out. We're going to see lots of boats as we head north. I need you to be my lookout. And they did see lots of boats. They saw cruise ships, private yachts, car and passenger ferries. They saw freighters, fishing boats, and tugs towing barges. Whenever a ship came into view, Salty raced around the deck, barking. The bigger the boat, the louder he barked. Cool it. Slow down, Zack shouted. Salty, one day, you're going to fall overboard if you are not careful. And there's some of the big boats that Salty liked to bark at. Looks like a squall is headed our way, Zack warned Salty late one afternoon. Let's put our life vests and lifelines on right now. Okay, old Salt? Zack quickly helped Salty into his gear, then hurried to tie down the boom and close the hatch. Salty was jumping around right on Zack's heels. Stop it, Salty, Zack yelled, but Salty didn't obey. He ran onto the edge of the boat. Salty got into a corner of the boat's open cockpit. Zack and Salty rode out the storm as they made their way safely into a sheltered bay. Zack said, Sorry I yelled at you, Salty, but at sea you must learn to obey my orders. That was a tough situation out there. Salty shook and ran and seawater all out of his thick coat and wagged his tail. The next morning, the skies cleared and the sun was shining. Time for a little shore leave, Zack announced, and they rode, a small, they, they rode to a small forested island. You've never been in deep woods. While Zack tied the boat's dinghy to a tree, Salty ran up and down the forest trail, yelping as loudly as he could, just for fun. Uh, what do we have here? From off in the distance came an answering howl. Is that you? Zack turned towards Salty slowly, carefully looking in all directions. Salty did not move. A large gray wolf stood at the edge of a nearby bluff. He did not move either, but just stared down at Zack and Salty. He stared and stared, then silently vanished into the forest. We've got to get out of here. Who knows how many wolves are up there, Zack whispered. Zack didn't have to tell Salty twice. Salty trotted right along, close against Zack's legs as they quickly headed back down the trail. Safely aboard their boat, Zack hugged his dog. How do you know not to chase wolves? <clears throat> Sailing up the coast was never lonely for Zack and Salty. Gulls followed their boat, and eagles watched from high overhead. Sea lions, seals, whales, and porpoises often swam alongside. On stops, they found abandoned fish canneries, deserted mines, and even totem poles 
standing at the water's edge and deep in the forests. One day, they discovered a Tlingit tribe's ancient log house, longhouse. Rowing ashore, Zach pointed to a totem pole. Many years before, it had identified the Indian clan who lived there. This cedar plank house was once a home and a fort, Zach told Salty. Many families lived in one building. They held feasts and religious ceremonies and dances inside. We'll tie up to a log right where the Indians used to pull in their canoes, and then let's go in. Salty followed Zack as he stooped to enter the only doorway, a low entrance facing the water. The house was dark and empty, just patches of daylight coming in through broken planks. Inside, it had a damp, woodsy smell. The dugout center no longer had cedar floors covered with cedar mats. The platforms along each side of the building where people once sat, slept, and kept their storage boxes had crumbled. The chief's quarters at the end of the large room had fallen down. Near that wall was a hole covered with planks, a Tinglet Indian foot drum. Sure, don't want to leave, Zach told Salty, but I've entered a long sail. I've charted a long sail. We have to go now. <clears throat> For the next few days, the winds were strong, and the little sailboat made good time to an isolated cove. A fisherman waved from the shore. Cleaning the catch, he yelled. Got some fresh fish for you. Salty jumped out of the dinghy as soon as it reached the beach. Hey, hold on to that dog. There are bears around here. And Mama and her cubs, I think, the fisherman warned. Zack wasted no time calling Salty back. Good boy, he praised Salty, taking a firm hold of his collar. The most dangerous animal in the world is a Mama grizzly with hungry cubs, the fisherman explained. Here's how you know they're around, he added, pointing to a patch of uprooted skunk cabbage. That's any bear's favorite salad. Imagine skunk cabbage. Hmm. The fisherman left his trap scraps on the beach for the wild animals. Nothing goes to waste in the wilderness, he told Zack and Salty. Oh, look at that. As Zack rode back to the sailboat, there was a low growl from Salty. He was trembling with excitement as he looked toward the land. On the shore stood a big grizzly bear peering over the shoreline bushes. Cautiously, she moved out onto the beach and pulled the fish scraps back from the tide line just as a pair of cubs raced out for dinner. Some adventure. Bears that close are too close even for me, Zack laughed. Glad you came back when I called you, old Salt. Even a brave dog couldn't win a bear fight. Salty kept watching the bears. Late the next evening, Zack and Salty motored into a large bay filled with white dots. It's just ice, Zack called out to Salty, who was yelping at all the passing ghosts. Calm down. The little chunks are harmless, Zack explained. Bigger pieces are icebergs. Lowering the anchor, Zack worried out loud. One of those icebergs could crush our boat if it hit us just right. We better stay here until morning. We have a wind that should blow them away from us, I hope. <clears throat> but during the night, the wind shifted. At early dawn, Zack was startled awake by a jolting thump. Then frantic box from Salty. Zack scrambled out of his sleeping bag, and Salty's box was getting farther and farther away. Salty, where are you, he shouted. Salty had jumped onto a gigantic iceberg and was drifting out to sea. Oh, look, at Zack must be very worried because Salty is not on the boat anymore. What do you think is going to happen?
Let's find out. Mm. Zach quickly undid, untied the dinghy and rode as fast as he could after his crew. Oh, salty, he thought. Icebergs aren't for riding. They're slippery. If you fall off, there'll be no way to save you. Using all his strength, Zach caught up with the moving iceberg. He pulled alongside and yelled to Salty to jump into the dinghy. Salty stood shaking on the iceberg. Zach saw the fear in his eyes, but he counted on Salty's obeying his order. Now, Salty, jump! Now, I hope, I hope Salty jumps, but what do you think? Let's find out. <clears throat> Aha. Uh -huh. Salty made a big leap and tumbled onto the dinghy. It's okay. It's okay, Zack soothed in a soft voice, hugging his shivering dog. You scared the wits out of me. I'm so glad to have you back. What would I ever do if anything happened to my crew? Salty licked Zack's face over and over, whimpering happy whimpers. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad uh, Salty finally got back. That evening, anchored in a sheltered bay, they watched the northern lights play magic colors across the sky. Tomorrow, we will sail into the next town's harbor and tie up for the winter, Zack told Salty. The days are getting shorter and colder. We'll live ashore for a while. Winter is no time to be out at sea. Salty cocked his head as if he understood. So do you think Salty knew what Zack was telling him? You've been a great crew on a long, rugged cruise. Zack saluted, saluted Salty as they stepped ashore. The next day, you learned a lot about the sea, a lot about the wilderness, and a lot about being brave. I'll see you on again as my crew any day. Salty barked, a quick bark, as if to say, aye, aye, sir, like any good Salty dog would do. And that's the end of their journey. Thanks for letting me read it to you.